Yeah. Did you have any culture shocks or any barriers when you first joined? <laughs> <laughs> Find yourself like at yeah. big tech companies, banking, consulting. Philosophy really breaks down to the love of learning. So going to Warwick to do that for me, I just thought, why not? What transformed my life and my Christian journey was we love because God loves us first in the book of First John. Everything is God. Love, everything starts with God. I am a Nigerian woman. I have come from the East. I'm a pastor's kid. These are just some things that make me very different. Stereotypically, people that go into the corporate world. The more I've grown up and got mature and understanding of people, so emotional intelligence, the more I can't be upset with people or hate them because there's a reason that the way they are. Welcome back to The Valuable Podcast. I'm your host, Victor Sasanya, and we are back with another episode, a special guest today, and we are joined by Vera Akoji. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm so good. It's, we've, I'm glad that we're finally here. Yes. <laughs> it took a bit of scheduling. We, yes, and we, we like made that. it work. And you studied <laughs> philosophy. Yeah, I did. As a whole degree. I did. I Was studied it mixed philosophy. No, pure philosophy. Pure philosophy. <laughs> but you found yourself like at internships in yeah. big tech companies banking consulting so <laughs> did you ever like was the end goal to be a philosopher <laughs> <laughs> i am a philosopher you i thought anyone could be a philosopher really okay really. um so i came into uni and i did the course because i liked it I, I really liked it when i was doing a levels i liked i did rs so we didn't have philosophy a level where i was but philosophy is a part of the rs uh, modules so I really enjoyed it especially philosophy of religion that was super cool I don't know I just found it interesting yeah. and philosophy really breaks down to the love of learning so going to Warwick to do that for me I just thought why not it was very intimidating I'll be honest when I got there but the end goal for me was going to be law so I, I mean I'm a Nigerian so uh, as you are <laughs> there's only three options doctor Lawyer, I count that, you know. So I thought, okay, let me try this law thing because blood scares me, and I don't like maths. So I was I was doing down the law route, and then I came to Warwick, and everyone does spring weeks, and mm. that's where I started to explore banking. And I was like, banking, mm. I like how tech is impacting banking. So I looked into tech. So I took a year out to work at Microsoft and Google, and I did a year to do that. So that's where I started the placement year option for, for the philosophy department. I see. And then, yeah, I've come all the way to fintech consulting. So it's, yeah, it's been a journey, still yeah. a journey. So studied philosophy as a degree, <laughs> took a placement, yeah, yes. in university, went to work at Microsoft yes. for a whole year. So you've got exposure to now the tech industry yeah. and go back to finish your final year. Yes. Then you go into fintech. Yes, fintech. And what, why, why, what led you down to a fintech industry? And... It's a really good question. Without me trying to make everything spiritual. In fact, everything spiritual. I definitely prayed a lot. So when I came from my tech placement, I was thinking I might go back into tech, but I wanted to solve problems. So one thing about philosophy is that you actually are there as a problem solver. Mm -hmm. that, that's what you're really doing. You're looking at different theories and different concepts. You're thinking, okay, how does this theory apply to this concept? And so it's always about analytical work. And I, I find that really enjoyable. I thought, how do I apply that in the business context? And consultants are known for being problem solvers. So I thought about the consulting routes and I prayed on it and I was going to go into a, I had, I had consulting offers, like to go into a consulting firm. Oh, wow. However, I saw a rotational program at the company I'm at and I thought, well, this is really cool because they had a consulting arm, they had all different. But So I thought, why not do a, consult a consulting and rotational program, which would give me different exposures across the business. Mm. So that's why I went for where I went for. And right. I went there for a graduate program, which I just finished last year, December. So. Wow. So it was like Holy Spirit inspired. Yes, it was. With prayer. Oh, yes, it was. But also down to the fact that you kind of took your learnings of philosophy and what you enjoyed and you wanted yeah, for to sure. apply it's it. Yeah, for sure. It's faith. Faith at works is what is dead. So I prayed a lot and it was God showing me that I meant to solve problems in the business arena. However, how and where, you know, that's so broad. So I actually remember I went to CLM the church CLM in yeah, Coventry. Yeah, I, went, I went to the Christian Amazing. Life Ministries. 
<laughs> Shouts to you, Levity. Amazing, amazing church. And I, you know, they say at the end, you can pray with someone. Yes. So even to this day, Sue, shout out to Sue. I'm going to send her this. <laughs> like, seriously, she, I met her for the first time. I said to her, you know what? It was January 2020. So I said to her, oh, I've got some offers, but I'm not sure if I want to work at these places. And I'm I'm very confused. And, you know, confusion is not godly. So I was like, I need to pray about this. So she joined me in prayer. And that day, something said to well, the spirit said, go to the library. I never go to the library on a Sunday. I like to go home and sleep, you know, after. Mm. But I went to the library and I remember just searching for opportunities. And then this posting for the the firm and the, the role I went came out that day, that Sunday. For some reason, that day, I'd never seen it. I was very good at research. I'd never seen it. It just came out in January. And I was like, this is perfect. Like I read through the everything. I was like, this role is perfect and actually I, I will say it wasn't even the rotational program I, I will get I'll give some more because it's really a testimony it was a sales role and I thought this is great this makes sense in my background because at Microsoft and Google there were kind of sales marketing roles that I did and I applied for it and then because of the pandemic two months after March they actually scrapped that role oh they received so they the receded no there, there was no offer at the point it was I was like penultimate stage oh, absolutely there was this lady, again, and this is what I mean by amazing people, Amaka, uh, who was the recruiter. I found her on LinkedIn and I was like, I know that this is probably going way beyond my my limits, but I really think I'm meant to be at this firm. And I know you've taken away this um, program. Could you please keep me up to date? I feel like there's another opportunity. She said, wow, yes, I will. And then two weeks after, she sent me the rotational program. So they'd scrapped individual department roles for a rotation program and only four people would be taken before I think they were going to offer about 12 to 15 roles only four would be taken in the UK for this particular rotational scheme I thought this is so competitive how can I do this but the whole process end to end it was just god and this was me doing it in the pandemic in my room final year my my when i got my offer i think i'd submitted my final essay it was really intense yeah. but i knew that i was meant to do that with the way she'd encouraged me the way it was quite seamless as well um yeah everything is everything's about being led by god i i know i'm meant to be there and i'm i'm still there now so i'm so grateful when graduates and students or yes graduates who haven't found a grad job because not everyone's fortunate enough to yeah, find a grad job or even so students true. applying for roles the probability of applying at the very start of the application yeah. i.e you see the job post you put your Literally. cv your cover letter to the end it's so slim like so slim. the people that come in midway into the yeah. process through a way of introduction through a way of referral yeah, they don't even exactly. have to do the formal way exactly. and they might even end up not getting it as well so yeah. you literally started from, from the, the beginning, beginning got yeah. to the end yeah. Start the grad program yeah. and finish it to the end. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah and Amaka <laughs> as well, to this day, she is my mentor. So t- she was, she knew, she even told me that God told her to make sure to to really stay close to me, to help me. She helped me so much whilst I've been at the firm I'm at and she still is such a big help. So divine helpers, that's the prayer, you know, it's okay. divine helpers. It's that's so important. <laughs> so important. Everywhere you go, professionally, personally, the right people being on your side, you know, it, it will take you where you're meant to be in life, you know. Wow, that's powerful. And so fintech, I'm so intrigued. But I work in finance, <laughs> yeah. not on the tech side of things. Well, let's break it down. What yes. is fintech in layman terms for let's, people? Let's that's not make it, it. People make it so like convoluted. Fintech essentially technology that empowers financial activity. Mm. And I'm in payments, so I'm specifically at a payments firm. So obviously, payments we all use it without saying the firm's name or anything. You know, it's a very well known way to pay. You know, through the card. So. My firm particularly is not able to issue money to people, but we enable the technology which allows money to be connected between uh, you, the merchant, and the bank, the issuer. So we're enabling that whole process to take place. So we're in the middle to empower that kind of, I guess, push and pull activity. I see. And there's so many different scenarios and flows but that's the best way to think about it is us connecting the dots between uh-huh. everyone all the parties involved in that process I see. so if i'm like i am the customer you're the consumer yeah consumer i had to pay for something so what's the, you said the merchant what's the merchant yeah so a merchant's so the the shop 
or wherever you're buying something from. So without getting too technical, I'd say if you're really interested in fintech and payments, the four party model is very interesting. So we're in the middle, like my firm. So you have the consumer and then the consumer connects to their issuer, their bank. So it could be a Barclays, HSBC, et cetera. Then you have the merchant who has their own bank. We call them the acquirer. So there's four parties, you, the issuer, the merchant and their bank. They all need to connect to distribute your money in between those different parties to make sure you're able to get the good, the exchange that you are trying to get from the merchant. So say you go into a Costa, for example, mm. it's instant as well, right? You just pay. Yeah, but there's so much that goes behind that. And that's what fintech is doing, is empowering that flow and so many different other scenarios. That's just the most basic way to basic describe way, it. Because yeah. when I think about fintech, I just think of like Apple Pay. Yes, a good that's example. That's a tangible difference. Yes, yeah, anyone because I you remember the times you used to carry coins like yeah, exactly. one pound coins, exactly. notes. Exactly. There was no such thing. Even exactly. when you're going to pay for the train, you yeah. couldn't like tap your phone or exactly. your watch. Exactly. But now everything's digital, it's so right? Normalized. And that's why I love fintech is also helping things become more inclusive. If you think about, you know, in Africa, for example, like how you can now actually track your money and how people can get money distribution a lot easier. Mm -hmm. um, you said Apple Pay, that's a great example as well. You can, you know, these neo banks, you're able to track your money a lot better and they can yes. connect between your Apple Pay and your banking apps and through open banking and so many different examples. For example, Facebook, you're able to do payments on Facebook. That's called embedded finance. These are all different practices within fintech, which essentially are all designed to make finance activity a lot easier and better for the consumer. It really all boomed from the 2008 crash where we're trying to now give power back to the consumer. And that's why I love fintech. and Because it's tangible. Like you said, it's tangible. I use it every day. You use yeah. it. Everyone uses it. So being in that space and working on some of the projects I work on, it's it feels like a real privilege because it's actually making a difference for a lot of people. Mm, definitely. And I love the fact you said it gives power back to the consumer. Exactly. That's I feel that power as well. Like exactly. Before, like you said, pre-financial crisis, a lot of people didn't know what to do with exactly. their money or it wasn't transparent. Exactly. Now, that is the key. I always talk about an app I have money box because hey, they don't yeah, pay me by the way. But if they want to sponsor me. <laughs> <laughs> but money box, I use money it because it yeah. gives you that transparency. Exactly. Like when you save, you mm -hmm. can literally I mean shout out the UX and UI designers as exactly. well because you can see how much you're saving. You they, they allow you to automate your processes. Exactly. You can see the interest rate clearly. If something changes like the gov if, if the government changes something in the budget or policy, they won't come and knock on your door and tell you that. Yeah. But apps like fintech apps like Moneybox will yeah. notify you in such a simple English way. Yeah. yeah. This is the change in the interest exactly. rate. This is what we are doing to affect this. Or exactly. this is the last day of the tax year. Like, exactly. It, it allows people yeah. to get control. It's so of it. important. This it's is how bringing I the control back to the consumer because that's that was something that just didn't happen pre 2008. I mean, I, I mean, I was young. I didn't know what was the experience, but definitely that was where a lot of these neo banks, particularly, have come out of. It's really to put back you in the driving seat of your own financial journey. It sounds to me, you know, a lot. You're in. The, I mean, in I'm really in the trenches. Yeah, I really am. I and am. Did that I'm come by a, a way of? your graduate scheme and the rotation mm. but because I also saw you done the Oxford fintech program yes exactly I think actually that really helped so I did rotations in the product team consulting where I am I also did it in an account team so with the bank team and also in digital partnerships so I was able to look at the how our solutions help us how we solve problems and how we work with our clients on the banking side and then the non-banking side so partnerships with the likes of Apple Google like I was able to see how do we work with them so I think I've had a really good like overview and that's why I came into the fintech um, rotational program I did because you get an overview okay. of everything I think that and also yes or the Oxford FinTech course and they don't sponsor me either but I think it's a very popular course for people who start in the FinTech industry because it gives you the basics mm. it gives you okay what is open banking why is it so important what are the trends how would someone especially FinTech right is always startup VC so we even get an idea of how they would pitch their their own products because um, there's a lot of money billions in FinTech yeah <laughs> it's, and, and, and it's, it's not the, the basics you just mentioned, like open banking, yeah. API, that's not the base. That's not common knowledge <laughs> to everybody. Yeah, I'll, I'll be so uh, honest. Yeah. And that's why when I saw like you completed the Oxford FinTech course, I was like, was this available? Did you, 
were you recommended it by your company? Did you find this yourself? It was a bit of both. So my shout out to my manager. <laughs> I'll send him to him as well. <laughs> he actually did the course at the time. And I thought, oh, this is cool. And then my buddy as well, shout out to her. She did it. So it was like, oh, what's this? I saw it on their LinkedIn. They kind of proposed I do it. And then I said to my friends on the graduate program, guys, let's do this. And I like coerced like five of them. Oh, wow. So we all did it together, which made it a lot easier. Because I'm a big I'm a big fan of okay if I'm gonna do something. I want all you my people share to do it. it. As well. Yeah, it's yeah. Not like you're big. getting ahead as a grad. Yeah, for and... what? We can all learn, get the basics. I mean we're all gonna be future leaders in Jesus' name. So we might as well know what we're talking about. So it was really good. It was a two month program. So I would was if there's it, like I, an executive was it online or Everything's online. You do some um, live tutorials if you want, but it's entirely online. I mean, my group, some some was from Rwanda, from the US, like it's an international course. And so the executive programs that a lot of business, people in business do, short courses, I definitely need to do another one again. There's quite a lot of them available. I'd really recommend them for people who want to just get that kind of learning aspect yeah. again. I mean, I did philosophy. I missed the learning. Yeah, nice so that was me yeah. kind of getting that revisit. Yeah, it's really it. good. Matt, was there any other sort of courses, programs or guides that you'd done that helped you, you know, get a good foundation in the fintech industry? Actually, no. And I think it's, you've actually made a good point. It's definitely me doing the rotational program and asking loads of questions. And even now as a consultant, where you're kind of needing to be the one to lead, I still ask loads of questions. Every day I'm learning something new. And I think that's actually a big thing I got from my course. You're always the learner. Even those who seem like they know a lot, the love of learning for the sake of it, that's what's helped me pick things up quite yeah. Now I speak out loud. I'm like, yeah, I've picked up quite a lot, actually. Yeah, I can tell you love learning. Like, yeah, you love it's education. Very important. I can, it, yeah, it exudes because there's some so people important. that because of a negative educational experience, mm. maybe because it was traditional. Yeah, they don't like they stopped learning. Per yeah, se, but it seems like to me, you. I think you. Learning. If you, for me, I always say, you know, the moment I stop learning, I'm dead because what's what's the point? You're just mm. yourself. Like, I just think learning is valuable and it makes you more valuable. The more I know, the more I can then help others with. Yeah, I'm a big person of like, invest in yourself, learn. I love podcasts and books. And and I love speaking to people that yeah. know something I don't. Because then you're always going to pick something up Pick new. something up, yeah. I, there's two quotes that just I re, re, triggered in my mind. The first one is learn, earn, return. Love that. I think I got this from Armani yeah, Simpson. Yeah, it's on me. my vision board. I've seen that. You've seen that, right? Yeah. yeah, like every person should go through that cycle. You should learn first, then you should earn, then yeah. you should return and give That's back. That's right. And hence why when I learn something new... Everyone gets that excitement. Oh, you've just found something like information. This is why they say knowledge is power. Yeah, because the 100%. minute that you get information that a lot of people don't have, you have sort of an advantage. Exactly. But a lot of people and is is a lot of people use their learnings to earn, which yeah. you should, but they have this attitude to like, oh, I'm gonna withdraw I can't tell everyone my secrets yeah. because I'm gonna withdraw yeah. that information. Gatekeeping. Oh, Gatekeeping. Not good. Yeah. But the information is <laughs> so widely available now. No, but a lot of good. a lot of people still do gatekeep and they don't go into the third bit of the cycle to return. So how how do how do you feel about that? I mean, that's very contrary to my values. And as a coach as well, I mean that's what I'm meant to do. It's you're helping people and a mentor as well, on both. It's very important to what you've learned to give it back because why should someone make the same mistakes you have or why shouldn't someone benefit from things that you've benefited from? Like, why not? Mm. I think also as a Christian, it's very important as well. I think just as a person as well, it's kindness, which is a very big value of mine, kindness. Because you just don't know what people are going through and you sharing X could solve a lot of their problems. You just don't know how much that seed you're planting can change their lives you don't know so you yeah. might as well and to us you've taken it up as a profession <laughs> like you said, you, <laughs> yeah consultant you're, you're, coach you're yeah. a coach and um your career coach if you want and your qualified career coach. So we're qualified. not just throwing out words <laughs> you've got the credentials yes, to back exactly. um the title so you're a qualified career coach yes. cred credited by ACCP. Yes, acc and accp okay but do you want to break down those acronyms yeah so <laughs> <laughs> the acronyms but it's association for coaching and there are two qualifications one is the coaching one so the flat one then there's a coaching practitioner so that's me being able to practice as a coach and also to bring other people into coaching. And it's, I did the transformational route. So it's where you go and learn about how to change people's lives. 
So it's actually a life coaching oh, course wow. I did last year, actually. Wow. So once again, this learning thing, I'm always trying to pick up new skills. For me, coaching is a ministry. It's what I'm meant to do. God has called me to encourage people on this earth. And I've seen it coaching as a great medium to enable that and particularly for me in my career journey I think it's a really good way to bring in my career experience the ministry and the coaching skill together through career confident which is my platform and I offer those coaching services to people especially those earning their career so it's very important to me to do it um, as a value but also I know I'm meant to do this like I'm meant to be mm. doing this on earth so it's like a purpose thing. Yeah. I love the confidence. You have a certain, like, oh. you have a authentic way of communicating your value and your purpose. Oh, and I can you. tell, like, so, like you know what you're speaking about yes. and you're very um, rooted in that. And Ooh, the fact that you understand that you're bringing in coaching, careers and ministry into one and you've used that to now provide a service that's valuable through your platform career confident it's powerful thank you it's, <laughs> it's so important to me thank you and, and what's the difference yeah so acc is i'd recommend people do it it's when you just like an intro into coaching so you're not really a coach but you are a you're able to understand the basics of so it's like the foundations of coaching I see. the practitioners now that you actually can be full-time as a coach like you're accredited to do that so I wanted to do that because you never know you know you never know where life might find me I want to be able to say I know how to run a coaching practice so you know how to take someone from point a all the way to point z when you do the ACC you kind of know the theory of how someone could do point a to maybe point F. But I wanted to know the whole process and how to really change someone's life. I think the best way I describe coaches is by contrasting with a sponsor or a mentor. But let me just say mentorship. So mentors normally tell people kind of what they should do or kind of advise them. A coach is not really there to advise you. They're there to help you f discover the answers yourself. So they, we believe that people have the answers and we're there to give you different frameworks and routes to discover those answers for yourself, which I love because it gives power back to the person. I don't think, and that's why I love coaching as well. You can coach anyone. It means that me, I'm 25, I can coach someone who's got years and years of experience like 20 years of experience I've coached people who are leaders and that's because I'm not here telling them what they need to do to lead but I'm helping them get clarity on unblocking some of the things which may make them a better leader mm. so there's so many use cases that coaching can apply to versus mentoring where normally it's someone with more experience or has something you know a bit more and that's why I think everyone should do the coaching course mm. I think everyone any stage you are and the best managers and leaders I feel are coaches because they're able to give you power to discover things for yourself rather than here's what you should do and do this. And I I mean, you tell me, I, I don't really like tech. I think especially the Gen Z, like they don't like being told what to do. They like to feel like they can get the answer themselves, but you can guide them in the right way. Mm. So I love that's That's really what a coach is meant to do. That's powerful because some people may think about a coach and you know, I think of like a basketball coach, a football coach, mm. like blow their whistle to, mm. to do. Mm. And I don't know many people with coaches. Like, for example, you're a coach. Mm. I, I know people that okay, I have a mentor. I haven't heard a lot of people tell me, oh, I have a coach. Mm. Does that make sense? And that distinction you drew for mentor and coach is really interesting. So I had a previous podcast episode shout out nana um how to be more than a mentee mentor sorry and we talked about this mentor to mentee mm, relationship mm. and how even with mentorship it shouldn't always be like i tell you what to do it's more no. so i'm live i mean nana describes it he's living his life poured out inspired by scripture in wow. the sense that i'm living my life and i want you guys to you know share in these experiences so if there's something that you know i've sort of had to bear the the harsh reality of you can yeah. skip that process yeah. and i yeah. feel like a lot yeah. of yeah that's the most that's valuable as well valuable genuine sort of mentee mentor relationship but as a coach where your job is to help people discover what that's is discover. in their way what yeah. are those obstacles what right. are those hurdles right. can i go under can i go right. over yeah. and like remove those lem mental limitations yeah. as well is just as powerful yeah i think it's i think Either way, what's for different use cases, right? And I mean, like I said, I'm also a mentor. So I also have mentees. 
I just feel the reason why I've chosen to become a professional coach is even as a mentor, it allows you to remove the need to know everything because that's a big thing, I think. That's humility for me. And that's one thing I always will be. the pers- I always want to be the person in the room that doesn't know everything. If I'm in the person that knows ev- person that knows everything in the room, I'm in the wrong room. <laughs> I-, I don't want to be in that room. It's a reason why I've chosen consulting because you're always having to be put into different projects and scenarios where you're like, I have no idea. And they're asking you to produce a framework, a structure, an answer, a solution. But you have to first we'll start off with the, I don't know, that tabula rasa, like I know nothing, and then build from there. And as a comfortable as I'm sure it makes a lot of people and trust me especially when I started in this role I was like what have I got myself into (laughs) Uh, I love it because it keeps you you know it keeps you humble it keeps you learning it keeps you you know on 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 an edge of discovering something you've never known before and I think that's what drives me yeah and in your coaching in your coaching journey it's clear that you've mixed it with like careers Mm. and I always think that and I know this from personal experience, you've been helping people with their careers when they had that internship or that mm-hmm. application way before you're qualified. So yes, what was the real reason you got qualified? Could you not yeah. do this without the accreditation? Yeah, you can. And I mean, a lot of people, I'm sure you've seen online, will say I'm a coach. However, I feel it was definitely a thing of credibility. But also, like I said, it's my like learning process, like wanting to know really what is a coach. Like, you know, going around saying I'm coaching people what exactly is a coach and how am I an effective coach? I feel because you're here to help people, I feel it's very important to think about the most effective way to do that rather than trialing and erroring. And I I just felt it helped me really get clear on the process end to end, how you can really transform someone's life, not just in careers. And people have noticed once I, once I got the life quality, life coaching qualification that they're like you shouldn't just be doing careers I just feel like you changed my life I feel like you're telling me things I don't know about myself and I really do get very deep with my clients and that's because I do think well that is a real coach you're meant to help someone move past barriers and blockers and get to the next step yeah so discovering like your passion for coaching helping Mm -hmm. people you've turned that actively into a full-fledged business yes uh, career confident yes career confident <laughs> and shout out career Con- i shout love the post by the way so when, when i see those um threads of like the things they don't tell you in the yes, workplace or the unwritten to codes so, wow yes, I just very important it, like, it's everybody feeling this as well <laughs> everyone is feeling mm, trust me even my friend yesterday she sent it to me like we need another one of these posts we that, do <laughs> it's like uh i did a corporate code um, corporate talk decoded like what are they really saying right. like that stuff I love because I That's, feel no, it's that, beyond honestly, that, the, I've read you know, part one part two yeah part two I need a part three right we need do. a part three because <laughs> they're so like they, you feel I feel like a lot of people that enter early their early yeah, careers early career, yeah. so like graduates and in that level especially some of the industries we're entering it might yeah. even be a culture shock one. Oh gosh yeah. so but then it's like, who's teaching us the game? That's who's right. teaching us how to That's act? Right. Who's That's teaching right. us what happens here? Like, there's a when I actually done a bit of research into culture because it came to a point mm-hmm. where That's I was like, culture was just a sticky word. Like, what's the culture of this firm? But when you actually enter the firm, the culture can be different. So I was like, what, what, what is culture? Where does culture come from? And there's so many different definitions. I'm not saying I'm an expert, but the one I liked the most was, in a nutshell, really simple. Culture is what we do around here. Mm. does it make sense mm. not really what they say on their company mm. website what or really they have on printed do. cards a promotion mm. like what we do around here meaning that if we leave at 7 p.m to go to drinks that's what we do around here mm. or if we all come in at 10 a.m in <laughs> pink shirts that's what we do around mm. here and because that what we do around here mm. changes sort of very fluid every day yeah. it's not really updated online yeah until you enter so i started to think wow (laughs) that's really important then you've got Mm. this intercultural element as well so there's culture of the entire firm right then there's different cultures of the individuals and the employees so you know you have an intercultural sort of challenge you need to navigate like not what do we do around here but how does this person work yeah due to their back yeah 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 they're a bit different like what what would be normal to one person is really absurd yes to another i've seen that that? (laughs) i've experienced that (laughs) exactly and and that's that's just to do this intercultural so now 
now yeah. you have to understand okay i'm working with and i'm guessing this will be mostly for big companies that are international and global that have different teams yeah or well, in fact almost every company should have some sort of diversity in within their teams but yeah so you will now be working with people from a different culture that's than it. you, and it's a whole game to play so i feel that's really really important culture very understanding important culture and having someone even having a coach maybe to help you through that process and yeah. i know you've already mentioned you have divine helpers Praise God. <laughs> <Hallelujah>. <laughs> you, you have divine <laughs> helpers in your workplace yeah. that can guide oh, you, yeah, that can sure. help you and Definitely. did you have any culture shocks or any barriers when you first joined <laughs> <laughs> We can't, we can't I speak mean, about that. where do I say it? No, no, we, yeah, no, no. I, let, let me say that I am a Nigerian woman. I have come from the East. You're from the East, right? Mm. You're from, so we're from the East. Um, what else? I'm a pastor's kid. I don't know if, I don't know if you. PK. Yeah, I'm a PK. <laughs> I've grown up in a church. These are just some things that make me very different mm. to my, or stereotypically people that go into the corporate world. So every day I'm facing culture shocks. Oh. Every day, every day, especially in consulting, because consulting, you are characteristically not meant to, no day is meant to be the same. Mm. If it's the day, every day is the same, you're doing something wrong in consulting. You're meant to be pushing the barriers. You're meant to be challenging people. You're meant to be making things different. So I'm daily having to face either it be through people or some of the banks I work with. You know, they have their own culture, they're the clients and so many, la so many layers. But I think what's helped me actually is to be very clear with my, the culture I, my culture, as in where I'm coming from. My favorite quote ever is your roots enlighten your root. Wherever you are coming from, never forget that. doesn't matter where you find yourself. I don't care if I find myself in X place or Z place. I'm still Vera. I'm still Vera who's grown up in the church. Who's, it's very important. And I think that will root you wherever you go. Because you're going to meet different cultures, different people. Even on my way here, I'm encountering different cultures every day, mm. like literally. But so you don't get lost, it's important to know yourself. So I was going to say, it's actually another thing that I've been learning a lot about, which is control, because I'm now in positions where I manage things and manage people okay. and manage processes on my own. So I'm learning about control. And the big thing I've learned is this circle control, which I also posted on about on Career Confident. So you've got the inner circle, which is things you can control. Then you have the outer, which are things that you can't. And unfortunately, a lot of us spend too much time thinking about that outer circle mm. without really thinking about what can I what do. Can so in this culture sense, I can't control how people act or where this person's from or what they think about me, but I can definitely control how I re receive it, how I react. So I think that's very important with this, this culture point. I love that, that you've looked into it. And I'm sure the real valuable point is what, what's the culture you want to control within yourself? And also, what do you want to exude? Because yeah. also another thing, and I have I have this affirmation that I do every morning. I'm trying to do it more and more frequently. And she says, I daily change cultures. And I, I've never, and now you're saying that it's really come into me that you can step in, especially as Christians, you can step into somewhere that's so dark and bring light. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and that's why it's important to feed yourself and grow and be the right have have the right influence, because then you can go in and actually shift the culture completely, and that's a really important thing for me. Everyone's always saying, "Feel you're so happy." Like even when I work on my project, they're like, oh, "You know, you make." I mean, actually enjoy where we have our catch ups, and I've had people be like, "Thank you," you know, I really needed that. Once again, you just don't know they're going home to stress, mm. difficulty. That's so powerful, and it's like a charge for us not to completely mold into the no. culture and you no, lose no, 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 your no. own roots like, never say, say that quote to me again <laughs> your roots enlighten your roots your roots enlighten your roots your roots like where you've come from where you've grown the earth for me it's in the church <laughs> it's being nigerian you know it's been from east london yeah. it's it's all my experiences that have made me who i am right yeah. so you they, know, they what i remember actually there's a phenomenal lady that's um her she had done a master thesis in, in culture and mm. she has because when you said your roots she actually trained me as well in culture and she has like a culture tree and mm. um because i don't have it now I'll just put on the screen somewhat if i'm allowed to share it um <laughs> or i'll link her details below but the culture tree shows like roots and like a tree um, mm. the the trunk then the branches then the fruit mm. but she depicts it in such a way that shows like you said 
what's beneath your culture so the roots under the ground under the soil when you come to the workplace people don't see what drives your culture mm. they don't see the yep. things like if you never so say true. you went to church so true they don't know why some so things true. they say so might true. upset you yeah. or some of yeah. the does yeah. that make sense yeah. they don't yeah. see that yeah. but yeah. that trunk and those branches they the see fruits yeah, and that and that can be evidence though. For example, I might not know you're Nigerian, but I know that you're black. <laughs> or you're, does that make yeah. sense? So, like, so other people now can see evidence stuff, yeah, yeah, and they yeah. they just limit culture. That's it. Oh yeah, different cultures. Yeah. You know, one's black, one's this race, yeah, one's yeah, another. Yeah. Oh, genders. One's male, one's female. Mm. Different cultures. But what really drives you the roots? A lot yeah. of people don't see. So yeah. maybe it's a thing about that boldness communicating that across. Like, yeah. Okay, this is why. Or this is why my culture, or sort of my beliefs, or this is shaped like this. Yeah, it's communicating. Sense? But it's actually, I love the tree analogy. Let's keep on going with that because my word of the year is depth, actually. So when you talk about roots, I was like, oh, you're getting into my word of the year depth. Depth. Key to depth, key to it is the fruits you produce. So if, especially the fruits, we're Christians, the fruits of the Spirit, it's kindness, love, patience, you know. If you can show those fruits and you can really judge someone by their fruits, I think it's more and more reason why we need to water our roots. We need to, and some things, you know, I've been learning about this as a person as well. There's some weeds in our roots as well, which is stopping us growing. Like these are the things we need to unearth. We need to even reroot and unplant some things. And this is what drives you as a person. This is your culture. This is your world. This is what you're bringing to the earth as well. And I think, as like I said, it's all about, Focusing yourself. I think that's the most important thing is focusing yourself. You made the good point. People don't see the roots, but you can see the fruit. You can see they're not probably nice or they're bitter. There's something that happened that is Sounds, rooted yeah. that bitterness that they're producing. Wow. So for me, it, it drives me daily to think about new ways to better myself. There's some things I probably need. Well, there's a lot I probably need to unlearn, right? And it all comes from like what seeds were planted probably years ago. That I probably either need to water more or on earth, you know. So to some people, this might sound crazy, like all of yeah. this different. But it's let's go deeper. So yeah, your word, your word is depth. Depth. And I like the fact that you said fruits. Now, that analogy of fruits or the fruits of the the spirit. Yeah. You said lovingness, kindness, patience, that patience, yeah. um, meekness, long suffering, all of those things. How do that show up in your daily life as well? Oh, this is a big question. So we're gonna <laughs> go deep, honey. Right. It's it's I'm telling you, I am on a journey. I don't want to come and be like, I am perfectly loving, perfect, perfect kind. I will say my biggest fruit that I've worked on is love. Love and people normally think romantic love. But as a person, as a daughter, as a sister, as a friend, as a partner, as a colleague, for me. How do you spread love? How do you and how do you define love? And most importantly, I didn't say the most important one is between you and God. What transformed my life and my Christian journey was the verse that talks about we love because God loves us first in the book of First John. And something in me, I don't know what it really got me thinking. Everything comes from God. That's basically what that verse is saying. Everything is God. Love. Everything starts with God. Mm through what he did for us on the through Jesus on the cross from today where I'm sitting here in front of you like everything is rooted from God's love and he loved us so much that he's given us Jesus he's given us you know resources he's given us friends family everything so for me my way of repaying that is discovering ways to love more other people and with between me and God and actually as well I've been on a big self-love discovery and understanding how do I love myself and how do I look at myself that's it's a big journey thing for me and I, I feel where I'm in my life now is a lot better a lot more progress yeah. but I'm still on that journey and I feel I won't be a good wife or mother in the future if I don't really discover this depth of love for myself between God and with others that's I think that's what I'm I think that's what we're all meant here yeah. to, to do so love is the biggest fruit that I've and continue to try and water and grow. Yeah. yeah. That is that is very, very powerful. And oh. that notion of love, like you say, God's love is yeah, so so important. 
it's all gonna say so overwhelming because one thing that i learned earlier on and later and i thank god for this revelation is that when you see a lot of people struggling in life maybe they're not happy like at work or they're not happy in life or they're going through like so much trials and tribulations that they do things that are i mean some will deem like evil or whatever way you mm-hmm. want to put it is because of an they feel an absence of love yeah. They feel an absence of acceptance. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, if you really yeah. boil down to yeah. it, like if you, like you said, the root, if you yeah. want to get down to the root of a lot of problems is because someone feels a neglection of love. That's right. Whether that's a neglection of love from their friends, mm. their family, their society. It, it can even be a neglection of love from their idols, their fans, yeah. their workplace, right? You will see that it stems to a lot of problems. A lot of problems. So you even saying that one thing for you is like love, understanding God's love, trying to express that love back onto other people. Because to love, to love people, we're not talking romantic love, just mm. to like, to to love people is hard. Mm. Does that make oh, sense? Exactly. <laughs> it is hard. Very, um, very. And I guess that is one of the greatest principles of you know if you want to say christianity but i think of life is to yeah. love your neighbor yeah now what does that look like is it the the one next door mm. or is it anyone you come into anyone. contact with that anyone. you love your neighbor and now how do we express that love to our neighbor if we and this is why i always love i love this like like you i love learning so i've been reading about like emotional intelligence and like this body of work what's emotional intelligence mm. how do we perceive people how do we understand people how can we be intellectual mm. and it for me a lot of things boils back down to emotional intelligence yeah it's understanding oneself than yeah. understanding others yeah and i think if you can master that yeah then you can love people because you, you, you understand that's right why someone's doing something you understand? Exactly. this is how they are that's it. and you instead that's of like the condemning them judging them canceling them <laughs> that one there's popular Ooh, <laughs> he's going to cancel it <laughs> you said hashtag cancel, cancel culture honey um, <laughs> cra- crazy that's not even yeah. the tour in that cancel yep. culture but <laughs> you can not give way to um things that are unacceptable mm. but more so you can understand and like just it makes it a bit more easier to to love someone and it yeah. can be tough love as well yes tough love is needed sometimes yes. like rebuke oh, woo. better is rebuke a Open lot rebuke me and my it. friends yeah yeah it's a lot of that <laughs> oh yeah so yeah, do you have do you have a, like a main accountability group would you say that friends that yes. hold you accountable i'd say my friends accountability is probably my like keyword <laughs> hold me accountable to this like even on my way here on the train my friends trying to get back into some fitness stuff and i was like okay, how do i hold you accountable so she said i said send me your goals like just write them down and send it to me and i put it on my notes and i also put in my so i will write my monthly prayer point so i'll just put a prayer point friends fitness goals That's i think cool. i think that's why friendship and that's why love has transformed my life because I can do that for other people, which feels a privilege to do. But also people are doing that for me. Like I can be like, hey, I'm really trying to change this about myself. And I will say the last two, three years now of my life has been solely down to divine helpers who are people that basically love me. My friends are divine helpers. My family, you know, people, colleagues at work have been divine helpers. They don't know how much they've changed my life. But ultimately it's because we're all... I feel the connection is that love. Like I love, even if it's not a deep love for me, is I love what you're about. I love what you do. I love what you stand for. So I'm going to help support that. Mm-hmm. You see what I mean? I think it all roots down to that idea of love. Yeah. I, it's funny because I was in Manchester today mm-hmm. and I spent the last few days there and we're mm-hmm. talking with one of my good friends. We're talking about um, purpose and the mm-hmm. fact that he said like someone loves what you do. And we're mm-hmm. talking about how sometimes there's provision mm-hmm. because people just love on you yeah. and they want to support you. That's that right. Is it. And yeah, that's I right. Feel in some of the workspaces I've been in, I've started to see that pattern on a higher level. Even when we're talking about like client, like multi millions, sometimes some investments, some partnerships, some things are just because someone has built that confidence in you to back you. Like it's it's not, you might have not got it fully written out, mm-hmm. but they trust in the person you are and they trust in your character before they trust in the the written business plan of yeah. course that's that's very very important as well and because of their love for you they'll probably help you get that business plan yeah. or get whatever documents you need to get something started on track but more so if you run to someone for an idea yeah like 
or are they willing to back you? Exactly. And even for anyone listening, I think that's a major, major exercise to think about who are the people that are around you that are willing to back you? Who are the people that are around you that if you tell them an idea, they're willing to run with you on that yeah. in love? Because I was sitting, like I said, I was sitting with my friend in Manchester and he was telling me how, <laughs> it's funny because he was telling me how that he got an idea, he wanted to create a VC fund. And I was like, a VC fund? And ambitious idea, but he could... He said there was people willing to back him, literally. Like, he will gather the money for the VC fund. He just didn't have the experience or the structure to make it happen. So, um, but just the notion of having people that are willing to trust on him, although he wasn't, he hasn't built a VC fund before, he hasn't built something before, I think it's very, very important. And those are the type of people you want in your friendship group or the divine, divine helpers, if that makes sense. Ooh. It's something I was this morning. I was listening to something. It was a podcast, and the lady was saying, "When you have a big vision and a big idea, in the beginning stages, be very careful who you tell it to. Be very careful." And that was because some people will not understand that vision, and some people actually, unfortunately, don't have love in their hearts, and they actually don't maybe understand or just. And some people do actually love you and just don't understand. So the fact your friend told you that that shows to me you have that fruit of love. Because he feels that you love what he's about and what he stands for and he can share that with you. So I think that's a real testament to your character. And also that taking that on as well, I think, like I've said, as you're going through this journey of life, be very careful you surround yourself with. And like I said, judge people by their spirit, their the spiritual fruits. Like what are they showing? Um likewise, even people that you're not, they're not friends, you know, if they're not nice or they have different characteristics, think about there's something rooted there. Pray for them. You said you said something I really agree with that's changed my life. It's the more I've grown up and got mature and understanding people, so emotional intelligence, the more I can't be upset with people or hate them because there's a reason that the way they are. Mm. There's a root there that you can just pray that God on earth, so whether it be that they're bitter or cold. And I mean, I encounter that pretty much all the time, right? Um, whether it be professionally, personally, and we all do. But I no longer lash out. I'm like, oh, that, you know, like, oh, there's a reason why that person's wow. done that. I pray that whatever it is, God helps them <laughs> because, yeah, it's not them. It's it's what they've gone through. Yeah. And that shows not just maturity in age, but also maturity, like spiritual maturity. Mm. You know, that's, a, that's a high level of wisdom mm. to have, have to. that realisation. Like, you wow, you know what? It's not them. No. There's something back in this. Oh behind. yeah, always. I mean, I don't want to get too deep into that. Yeah. <laughs> into those ones, no, but yeah. for sure. And in your, by reason of your roles as a career coach, you have people that are actually opening up to you about yeah. career plans. Yeah. And I think that's very actually important because even myself, like my mom might ask me, like, "What's the next career plan?" I might not share everything with her because I'm trying to figure it out. Does that make sense? Mm. I want to make sure that I'm a, at least one foot into the door. Something's successful if I share mm. what's my next thing. Mm. But you have clients that they've not there yet, but they're no. coming to you, confiding in you. This is what I want to get to. And the w- reason why it's so significant is because whatever career they're getting to, that's going to affect themselves, it's going to affect their friends, exactly. their family. It might even put food on the table that's for what their it cousins, their that's brothers, their is. sisters. That's what it is. And, that is what it is. And you're, you're there on the other end like helping them it's a privilege that's why i say it's a ministry it's a ministry and a privilege to be a coach especially in the career space because like you said it has knock-on impacts people are doing I've, I've had so many different use cases i've had people that haven't worked for years i've helped them get a job i've had people who have no idea what they need to do i've had people who are like hating their jobs like they're depressed like and obviously a big thing i will say disclaimer is i always um help to an extent if I can't help, I'll root you in the right place. So I have had people had breakdowns or mentally I can see that they they need that support. But the fact that I can even provide that opening of, have you thought about a therapist or even having that way to guide them is a privilege because it can really change their lives. Was it yesterday that a girl messaged me at midnight uh, or this morning rather? And she, when I started with her, she was extremely anxious extremely afraid about her career and through CBT practice which I recommend to anyone but she went to CBT some coaching as well as she finished CBT she's now starting a consulting firm in September (laughs) what (laughs) and I started with her two years ago so I love the fact that I can see people go from 
no idea to thriving. I mean, I, a lot of my clients I still keep in contact with. I mean, one went to Singapore. He's working in Singapore. Another one has moved to Dubai to work full time. You know, and it's just like I've been a helping hand to that. It's so... Ugh. It's a privilege. Yeah. And everything is done through this platform, Career Confident. Yes. So what are the services or packages that you offer if somebody's yeah. listening and, wow, like, okay, I actually want to speak to Vera. Of course. I mean, the best way to reach me is through Instagram. So before I used to do everything ad hoc and you'd email me or get my get my contact. So I started the platform only last year, actually. I only started Career Confident. No way. This time last year, yeah. So March... Yeah, March 2022. Wow. So yeah, the best way to get through to me is the Career Confident Instagram, which is career.confident on Instagram. And what I offer is end-to-end support. That's that's what differentiates me to other people. Sometimes people do the middle way, like interviews, and I can help you, or I help you with CVs, or, uh, yeah. but I can help yeah. someone go from navigation i have no idea i just need to know where to go before i start applying i can take you from that all the way to cv help to um tests to uh, interviews to assessment centers even to when you start the job so i offer like a 90 days your first 90 days i offer coaching for that as well and i offer like plans and, and ways to to help you maximize success so i've done this now for five years i've been qualified now for three years of that and it's been thousands of students, whether it be one to one or through groups or speaking events, yeah. you know, impacted by this. And, you know, you said something there and you said it really changed people's lives. So I did a survey of people's salaries and how, you know, what was the salary of the job that I helped them to get. Yeah. And as of one month ago, it was now two million of client ser- client salaries I've generated. <laughs> and that's just that's just a survey. Right. Some people didn't respond to my service it's probably more than that but i can say two million is the amount and for me to quantify that shows it's exactly what you said it's oh wow that's two million that people didn't like they didn't have any idea to get or they couldn't get you know people are actually providing for families now like one of them just got married so he's able to use his job to provide for his wife his future kids and i'm like this is such a privilege to be part of that journey because it can change people's it changes people's lives we know how important careers are I mean, anyone works, you know how, and even if you don't, you see the impact of not, right? So it is so important. And I I want everyone to feel confident in their career journey and going into the right careers for them. You spend so much time. Time. (laughs) Building your career. Everyone knows that if you're, well, depending, the work landscape is changing. Mm, I was saying like 30, 40 years ago, normally on your job, you probably spend more time with your colleagues than you do your family. But I think now the workscape, because of remote jobs yeah people stay at home they can be with their family so things are changing but it's still a lot of time right yeah. <laughs> you still, no, no. let's be honest i think i've i think the stat is you spend more time working and sleeping or something i think i've heard something like that Probably. in your lifetime and it's like you spend a lot of time working, even if you're not working for a company or for yourself. I still, that's your career as oh, well. Right? Probably, if you're working for yourself, you're you're because I heard about that <laughs> actually. This weird, interesting phenomenon where people are working, but of course they want to be the entrepreneur. They yeah. want to be their yeah, own yeah, boss, yeah, yeah. so they think quitting their jobs makes them their entrepreneur but really what they've just done is fired their own boss yeah and they're an employee boss, yeah. for themselves yeah, <laughs> like yeah. they're the first overhead they are an employee for whatever they're exactly. doing and until they grow that to a scale and size where they don't have to no longer like work in the business yeah but work yeah, on yeah, the yeah. business yeah, 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 that makes yeah. sense I think yeah, yeah, yeah. this is actually in the book called the e-myth don't know if you've heard no so that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, the EMIF is okay. they've, it's an old book, but I think yeah. they've got a new edition. But okay. it, it it goes through how you should work in your business. I'm mean, sorry. Let me do that again. It goes through how you should work on your business. Yeah, rather than in, in your business. Very and important. the importance of systems yeah, and processes. Very Just of, important. Like what you said, instead of ad hoc, very oh, send me an important. email, let's schedule exactly. a time. And I'm, and I'm still on. building. I mean, for example, right now I said Instagram, what I was saying in my head was, this is why you need a website. Like I'm building a website at the moment. I'm not going to say the live date because in case. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a live date in mind. I definitely want it to be out soon. And, you know, it's... You've said that, and I, you know, you're a business owner as well, and you know, and I've done other businesses as well. Career Confidence is one. I had a lash business at university, wow. and okay. I manage people. And the big thing that helps you be successful is when you're not doing, like once again, this podcast I was listening to today, it was um, saying you need to get to a point. So write down your job description as in you as an alone person in your business now. Write it down and break it down into like areas 
those are people you need to employ. It's not about you bringing people in and I have loads of people I manage. You want to get to a point where you don't even need to be there. That's a successful business owner. Mm. Um, I even listened to another podcast the other day and shout out to him. He's amazing. Um, an owner of a, of a black owned restaurant. And he was saying, I don't even call myself an entrepreneur. I just call myself a glorified worker because he still has to work on in his business. So a true entrepreneur is someone that d- doesn't need to be there. Like that's the goal, right? I think that's why we want to go from full time and work to your own, being your own boss because you don't want to be so de- you are a dependency for the success of the business. You want to be able to be shaped to strategize, lead, delegate, like manage people mm. offhand. So yeah. it's what I'm definitely trying to build for career confidence as well, because on a level of humility as well, I don't think it's meant to start and end with me. It's mm. way bigger than me, what I'm trying to do. So that's the goal is to keep scaling and growing it to that extent. Mm. And that's perfect because there's a quote, a saying that came, so I just came from a brunch, um, called Shout yeah. Out Global Purpose Enterprise. And, we were talking about purpose, but we're talking talking about like business and success. And mm. it said like success without succession is failure. Yeah, a hundred percent. Meaning that a lot of us want to obtain success in whatever yeah. way you categorize success, but we don't think about succession. So we're building something, but what what happens after? Are we actually building the systems, process, mm. and foundation? So even when we go, or if we want to leave this now, it can succeed after. Exactly. Does that yeah. make sense? And I think yeah. that takes a lot of thinking and managing. Oh, yeah. You're talking about your career. I mean, it's something like a podcast, right? Yeah. I'm still all far behind in terms of automating stuff doing processes and systems because I'm like I'm still, I'm still like trying to schedule with guests going back and forth with email <laughs> where really and truly I should have like a seamless booking mm, calendar or someone that does it for system. you and that's what you're building to right yes exactly I mean it takes it takes time but I yeah. think it's very intentional but I'm also thinking how can I build this like what happens after what is the valuable podcast what's the goal of it are we yeah. just disseminating information mm. but do we want people to actually gather that information and come back into a community which i've mm. now launched a valuable community yes. yeah. where people can meet each other yeah. and okay i heard this on the podcast how can i you know develop this how can mm. i learn more how can i act or oh, can i support you i've had people literally listen to the podcast wanting to join the community then ask or oh, what roles do you need mm. now it's just me exactly it's just me that i have See? thank you for telling me i'm not written down the job description so very important on a right page on. what is everything that, that you I do <laughs> and break it down that's and i heard that I was like, oh, that makes so much so sense, much sense. Are you like, thinking, wow. that makes she said it and I was, it was like a nugget of just gem it was, it's the boss babes podcast i love it it's okay. like, like my <laughs> secret pleasure boss babes but i was like yeah because people be like oh like scale business i want i want to have a marketing person but do you need a marketing person or do you need someone that's good at sales? Or, you know, or you say, oh, I need someone that's good at sales. Or do you need an admin assistant? And it's because people aren't thinking about what they need. They're thinking about what looks good or people say you need in a business. I've so, got five employees. <laughs> and so what? I mean, I'll, I even say it with my first startup when I had a lash business. I employed people into the startup that, uh, particularly from a marketing standpoint, when, when I think back to, I probably needed someone who was an expert at sales. I needed someone who was maybe expert at product development because I had to do a lot of that myself and think about that myself, which mm-hmm. took so much time and I probably wasn't the best person to do it. Rather, I could think about vision and, and that's what you're meant to be doing, like the next steps, like how do we grow this and bringing the right people to help you grow it rather than doing the work yourself so Sorry, it's it's a journey though like you said it is I'm, and I'm, I'm glad to be on that journey like I'm not frustrated it's, it's yeah. even exciting because it what is. you just told me I have something actionable to go out yeah. and write down the job description what is everything that I do then to extend that write yeah. down processes what yeah. is, not just what I do but what is the process yep. for this Key. thing like how long does it Key. take how many steps are there Key. then I can break it down okay what can I outsource some to Technology, AI. I was about to say that. I mean, <laughs> Chat GBT. Like, I'm even th- some. I'm even using Chat GBT for my Instagram posts now, and I'm like, I mean, that's why I like fintech as well because it's making usual processes or paying someone way more accessible, easy, seamless. So 
I love how you think about it in terms of people and then also the process because there may be things that you're able to just completely outsource to a mm. technology resource. There's a book that I've read. Amazing. Another book, tell me. This is uh, You know when you feel like you're sharing your secrets? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a grab Daniel Priestley, 24 Assets. Oh, I no, I've never you, heard this I one. Prom- like, you're gonna, okay. You are going to think. Send me, can you, you just, action. I'm making notes. But yeah. <laughs> can someone send me these? I, I'll, I'll send it like to you. But, so Daniel Priestley <laughs> made a book called 24 Assets mm-hmm. and even before you read the book, you can take, he has a free online like scorecard a quiz okay where so literally go and do it after this yeah using will, career confidence answer the quiz it's like a scorecard so you just answer questions yes or no questions and it'll tell you what you score in each 24 assets and he the book is basically if you want to build a digital scalable business mm-hmm. Every business needs 24 assets. Now, when we talk about assets, people think about money, Mm -hmm. property. No, no, no. He includes stuff that a lot of people don't see, such as what we just spoke about, processes, culture assets. Then he breaks down what are culture assets and why you need this in place. Do you have a good online onboarding video for when you bring in your first employee? Do you have certain documents in place that you can recall at any one point? Or do you have a brand asset? Meaning that Mm -hmm. when you get a designer on, instead of you you know, paying them, tell them mm. to do the job. They come back to you, oh, what what colour, what mm. hex code should I use for this? Mm. What logo, Ooh. can you send me the logos? Yeah, brand kits. Like, yeah. do you have a brand kit that literally mm. goes word for word? This is our brand. This is why is our brand. These Ooh. are all the hex codes. These are the logos. You should speak in this way. This is the tone of our company. So like, he goes through and there's funding assets, business plans and stuff like that. But he goes through every asset, every business should have and why you should like, if you want to like bring in revenue and scale it, you need to just f- focus on improving the quality of these assets. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you won't have the money at the start to make the best stuff, the best mm-hmm. production, the best funding documents, the best. And he describes it this way as well. For example, if we're funding assets, let's say um, a business plan. If you are a solo startup or entrepreneur building a service-based business, right, you might write your own business plan. Mm. But he's saying if you are a company such as a, I don't know, a McKinsey mm. or of a bank or whatever. If you're writing a business plan, you don't write your own business plan. Mm. You hire a consultant to do exactly. that because it puts a stamp on it. Like this is, this business plan was consulted by Bain yeah, yeah, or McKinsey. Yeah. Does yeah. that make sense? So it's so fascinating when I was reading about mm. all of these different assets is I've already stored it because I read, I've been got back into like reading. I, I sort of fell out my love for reading because I was mm. more of a doer. Mm. So I was mm. a, listen to a youtube video a podcast execute mm-hmm. that's just how i i done but i feel like those limitations it grounds you because I, I wasn't reading it i wasn't yeah, learning again so no. now i've scaled it back started to read books nice. and just i'll just put another one in there i got a couple i'm on a book spree can I just... you just send me these links and you know you have me on whatsapp like that sounds excellent for yeah. what i'm trying to do with my business so i i will definitely take that on yeah. that quiz i'll definitely do that this weekend no definitely and i'll send you that and also mm. there's a second book um i've just bought so i've not read um called building a second brain mm. so it's linked with like you know notion I was going to say, is it digital? I think I have seen this yeah, one. It's so, all about um, the digital. It's all about how people could build second brains now, like yeah. the notion and yeah. the idea of, you know, instead of just reading and like trying to store all the information in your mind. I think you said it before, like the, the brain's about thinking of ideas, mm. not storing information. Yeah. Like you store information to a certain extent, but when you're storing a lot, you want to build like a second brain, yeah. outsource that and use yeah. like technology and AI to automate yeah. processes. To automate so it. you can go and control and F it, yeah. and oh, this is what I spoke about or learnt. And you can just read it. But So that's another book I'm excited to read. I haven't that's read a that good yet, one. So. I like Notion. They don't sponsor. They should sponsor Correct Confident. <laughs> I mean, everything is there. Um no, that's oh, this is. Yeah, so there's a so lot, I'm really excited. There's a lot. Tell me how that one is learning. as well. I think that that first that 24 assets one sounds perfect for where I'm trying to build Wait, my business right now. So I'm excited. Yeah, definitely. And let I'm me know excited. How it goes. Yeah, I will. I will. <laughs> and um, so with your business, where so I can't believe it's only been a year. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> it's only been a Me year. too. <laughs> but, well, plenty of clients. Yeah. Over two million of salaries generated. generated yeah. Um, do you have like a fr- what's the framework you use? Ooh. Is it the same for each? And I say this because is it the same framework for each client? Like, does when you onboard a client, is it we go through this in terms of career planning, or is it sort of a consultation? A client comes to you with their issues, their problems, and you just find the solution. Yep, definitely consultative. And that's based on the coaching framework. So I use different coaching frameworks and 
I'm at, my approach is actually very hypothesis driven, which I love. I've created this. So I usually, and it depends that like someone might come to me for interview coaching. So that's quite 101. Like I, I know how to do that. But especially those who come to me about career navigation, I usually ask them some questions, start to understand themselves, where they're at. Then with my hypotheses, I test them against using different frameworks. So different frameworks and coaching is normally like a set of questions or a way of going from one point to the end point with the client. So I test that. So I, I really, I realize I really am an expert at what I do because it's not like something you can, I can teach you to do. You have to bring it in from understanding the coaching practice and my experience over the last five years I, I've actually built an understanding of what works for certain di- types mm-hmm. of personas and people but the truth is like you said there and you've implied every every client's different everyone has a different barrier or reason why they're not able to get to the point they want to get to so sometimes you know there's some vanilla things especially around confidence or uh, they don't know where to start but sometimes some people just need someone to hear them out and then they're like, oh, actually, I know what to do. So I really just test using my understanding of them, their problem, and I test some different framework questions. And then at the end, what always I do is provide a set of recommendations. Now, the reason I do it at the end is because I'm not a mentor where I tell you on the way. I'm helping you get clear. You've probably told me some things you want to try and I summarize it for them, back to them. And that for me and for every client, I think is the gold because you've had a process with me now. What do you do with it? And sometimes I think people find coaching a bit frustrating because they will leave with more questions than answers, which mm-hmm. I, I and I do have that when I especially have clients who do multiple. However, I always try and make sure that even after one session, you have some clarity and something to go away and think about and work on. So that's usually my process. You start... And then we end with some actionable steps to actionable take. Stuff. That's so interesting. And career planning. Yes. So that's one service as well. <laughs> exactly. So I'm sure people come to you, like you said, confused. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of <laughs> course. Course. I don't know what career I want to go into. I'm in Honestly. a career now. like, And career planning is beyond a job. Mm. It's like, yeah. what, what career, what do I want to position and align yeah, myself yeah, for yeah. the next 10 20 30 yeah. 40 years if that's what somebody wants yeah and that's a career so do you do career planning well? yes absolutely i do it the kingdom way which is i'm sure we spoke <laughs> about that just before so the way i do it with my clients and without telling the whole service you know come to me and we'll do it as well and not spoiling anything but the service is just in that approach of let me understand where you're at So we call it the create model in coaching. So current reality. So I understand where you're at. Exploring alternatives, the EA. So I'm understanding, we we start to think about, okay, what are some of the routes that you can consider from where you're at? You know, some people know their routes, people have different, some people are like, no idea. So we start to carve that out through questions and working together through those routes. Then you end with targeting energy. So now we've thought about these different routes Are there some specific, so that this is at the end, the recommendation. So let's say I've got client A and they've gone, I think I want to go into finance, but I kind of like law. Okay, So why? Like what draws you to these areas? And then we start to uncover some values, some ways of working, some um, cultures, some lifestyles that they, and and that uncovers what they really want to do. And it starts to target, okay, actually, this is what I really need from a job. So I'm going to go away and I'm going to make sure that the jobs I look into have these things. So this helps them to carve that out. And then we think about an actionable plan, you know, whether it be, I need to research this. I need to speak to these amount of people. Like that gives them some actionable steps to take away. But first it starts with that, with the create model. And that's why I love it. It's where you're at to where talking into where you want to be mm. and we we map that out uh, on an actionable plan so i love those those sessions as well because they're normally quite dynamic so they normally happen once but then maybe the person comes back normally people have a lot of boomerangers so they'll yeah in a good way they'll come back to me and they'll be like i i landed here i'm now two years on i want to do something new how do we revisit the career plan and make it different because your career is dynamic you're not I don't think you're meant to go, I know what I want to do for five years. I think, honestly, the best plans are dynamic. They're revisited regularly. 
and you're constantly challenging if you're, you're where you need to be. Because that's why I do it in that route of making it wider to who you are and what matters to you rather than, I think you should just go into consulting. Because it's like, why? Like, why? Why? What's rooting that? Like, that's why I ask those questions. And those questions will help you always uncover where you're meant to be throughout your career. So that's why I think coaching is so invaluable. And that's why I love doing that service. Yeah, that's that's really good because... It's even myself, like, yeah, <laughs> in fact, I was in your in your WhatsApp just a few, <laughs> a few weeks ago, a few months ago, about career, because, yeah. like you said, it's dynamic, and sometimes dynamic. it's forcefully dynamic. Like, you yeah, might think you've got the best best going, and something just yeah, changes, and you've yeah, got to now career. think about what's next. Yeah. And I'm sure some of the clients that come to you for that career plan, like you said, I love the fact you said boomerang. Mm, they, they implement yeah, the action yeah. steps you'd provided come back to yeah, sort of change time. it so it's yeah. like a, it is like a dynamic it is dynamic so would you recommend like people have a career coach then i think everyone should have a career coach i have a career coach like i am a career coach with a career, career coach, coach. Okay. i think everyone should have a career coach and i think a good coach you shouldn't rely on depend on them. that's the difference as well they, none of my clients i pray they don't think this they depend on me i just give them the clarity to get to where they need to go. The boomerangers are rare, but often when I get them, it's because of there's been a shift. But I should not leave anyone feeling like they need me to be there to to move next. I should enable them to understand the tools, the answers for themselves to move forward. So I think everyone benefits from that wherever you are in your career. That's amazing. And I really want to extract the value out this is a valuable <laughs> podcast. I know you're, you're reserving stuff for your client. <laughs> no, <laughs> you don't wanna, I just don't, don't want to spoil up. anything. And I can ramble as well. No, no. It's good because I'm sure there's other people that can relate. And at this point in time, there's just something they're not sure of about their career. And I've heard this term portfolio careers yeah nowadays we careers. don't do one career we have yeah, a portfolio hundreds. of careers like we are freelancer here we're full-time nine to five here we're creator here so portfolio careers is that something you've come across where your clients actually seeking direction or not just one job but like how could i i want to do five different things yeah that's so like that's everything that career confidence stands for it's like why not the question I ask is, okay, you're like, oh, I want to do this and I want to do Okay, so why don't you do both? Like, so, so I have, I have literal clients who do two things. Like they have a job, but then they want to balance their freelancing. That's a big, a lot of people do freelancing. That's become very popular. So very popular. I'm always trying to help them understand careers that can enable them to do both. And even in ways that could support each other. Uh, like I have one client who is in the media industry. So now she's thinking to be, become a media consultant. So she's been in the media industry for five years. Yes. I was like, that's perfect. Like, why are you thinking that it's like an either or? Why don't you continue to build yourself in the media? Maybe eventually you become part time in the media industry and you do the freelancing thing more and more. But why don't you look into roles and positions? Like I challenge them. I like, think about positions where that actually lends to your career and the career obviously will lend to your experience as a consultant. So now she's killing it. Like she's been doing that for like a, three months and she's had like some big, I won't name the clients, but big clients in media. And she's just because she realised, actually, I, it's just, once again, it's me questioning and it's not me telling you, you need to do this. I think she knew the answer. She just uh, benefited from having a coach to help guide that that conversation a bit more in her head mm. so mm, mm, mm. and it's a growing trend mm. of having portfolio careers and like yeah. you said freelance I mean yeah. you work full time and you you're yeah, not, exactly. you're not even freelance exactly so it's, it's the same thing same with you yeah, like the same thing with a lot, a exactly, lot of us and I think yeah. it's, it's, there was an article I read and this was an article based on um, Business Insider a shout out Shola West actually she features us on it about Gen Z and about the fact yeah, that love. it's the data is saying it mm -hmm. we are going into jobs and careers and we want to work on passion projects we want yep. to freelance and exactly. employers can't keep on not recognising oh, this oh no because <laughs> they enter and depending on the industry you're in you have to shield that thing you have mm. to make sure it's not shown and it's not known and that can add to the levels of stress you experience in the workplace or the level of vulnerability or transparency that you can share which may then affect your actual productivity yeah. at work. Does that make sense? Yeah, 
It's it's so it's a very touchy one. I think it's only just now being recognized. Some firms are better than others. Just from even just talking about my friends who I know who are really into their businesses and are still working, some can be very unsupportive. But this is why I'm here as a coach. I'm like, there are firms that are more supportive. And that's even from my knowledge, but also I can help you ask the right questions of the employer during that process to unlock what really is the art of the possible. Mm. Obviously, you can't guarantee until you work there, but there are some questions and there's some things to watch out for that, for example, you ask them, okay, the work-life balance, like what is the hours? What do people usually do in their free time? Like you can ask that of the people that you know working at the firm and you start to uncover things like, oh, actually people have lives outside of this or is it that work is their life? That's yeah. obviously a dead end, right? Like, you yeah. know, if, if you're thinking this, these people literally work 100 hour weeks like, and the weekends are even debatable, then it's going to be kind of tough to sell that idea of I have a passion project. Not impossible because I have friends who do work like that. However, they've definitely been open and transparent to carve out. And let me be very careful what I'm saying here. I'm not saying that you should jeopardise or be less valuable to a workplace. And that's very, I think that's even the problem. People think that you will spend less time in your job. Actually, it's about how do I have my work time and then I have my business time or my freelance time. That's awesome. And that's what it's about. It's more about the res- the, the word is boundaries. Like, is there boundaries to that? Like, is there... Right, between nine and nine, I might need to be on my job. But after that, at my weekends, I have my own time. Is there an understanding of that? Like, if there's not, that's where you're going to face problems, right? But as long as there's a true understanding of the expectations, the culture, then I think you can work around it to the mm. best of your ability. So that's that's the, that's where you can, once again, that circle control. You can control that, control right? You can things. ask those questions. You can, and especially me, I'm, I'm learning myself, what are the boundaries I'm putting in place? Like, people really treat the way that you allow them to treat you. And especially in the workplace, that is the case. If you want to work 12-hour days, especially in consulting, they will allow you to do it. <laughs> but if you <laughs> adhere to the normal hours, which for my firm particularly is normally around nine to six, sometimes over if you're busier, then they'll also be okay with that. So it's, it's about, yeah, you, you really need to work within what you have and be unafraid to clarify and have boundaries. Mm. That's powerful. And so do you agree then that if someone's doing career planning, they shouldn't separate the personal life from their career? Uh, This is good. The best advice I got on my placement year was if you are separating your professional plan from your personal plan, then you are not creating a career plan. Your career plan is embedded in the lifestyle. And that's why I mean, it's holistic. What's the lifestyle you want to live? Do you want to get married? Do you want to travel? Like, Your career can make or break these decisions. So you need to think about, first of all, what do you want? Who are you? What are the values you want to exude? How do you want to grow? You That's why I take people through that process. Then it can help them to start to understand what they need to research and uncover and discover to get clearer to where they can be in the next one year. After one year, what does that then look to in the next five years and beyond? It's a compound effect, but it starts with, first of all, understanding what you want and what you need from a career to live the life we want. There's no point separating it because you're always going to be in constant clash. And I did that. I did it on my place. I remember I was like trying to, glow, you know, do the glow up thing, like change my life. And then I had a career plan. I remember it was in one document, but I'd separated it quite clearly. And the guy was like, delete that placeholder slide. That needs to come together. I need to see every, well, he, obviously he wasn't telling me I need to see your whole life, but when you're planning, you need to bring it all together. It needs to be a like holistic life plan thing, not my career and then I have my life. Like okay. you need to really make everything work together in a, a good in a good way, in a holistic way. Holistic way. I think that's so, so important because even myself, when I first made this career plan, and to be honest, it wasn't even a full-fledged plan. I probably mm. need your services, mm. but I had a good idea of where I want to be, when, what I want to be mm. doing. But that personal life, because things are so fluid and change your personal life. And one day you might opt up and say, hey, I want to get married. Yeah. <laughs> I want, one day you exactly. might say, hey, I want to travel more. Or exactly. something's happening in your family life that your parents or your cousins need mm. more attention. Yeah, exactly. And if you never factored that in exactly you're gonna living, find yourself stuck you're living like you said a, you're living a clashed life yeah just be colliding left right and, and it's <laughs> just it's not and i don't want to i not i hate the word balance but i believe in priority but here's my thing um 
you just want to have a whole life. The word is whole. Mm. Whole. You want to have a whole life. And when you're separating things, you're almost like removing pieces of the pie and you'll feel it. You fill the gap. But if you think of things in a whole, that you are a whole person, you're trying to become whole and have a whole and fulfilling life. How does your career fit into that? Wow. That's what people really need to, st- and that's for me, that's true confidence. I'm taking ownership of my career to enable and express the life I want for myself. Mm. That's I can true see career that confidence. You're embodying it in career mm confident like you said career planning the kingdom way yeah so just to i know we've talked about a lot of things but if we were to break this down is there a generous generalist way is there a kingdom way what would be the difference oh yeah do you know what i even have a definition and i i don't have it written down but the the um icm so it's the institution for chartered managers have a planning career planning definition which talks to the fact that career planning is around setting actionable steps which enable someone to move forward in their career once again i don't want to misquote it if you want to put it below but then i I do a edit like a career confident edit the kingdom way is rooting that actions and steps from a place of spiritual leading so praying you know, the book of Proverbs, God's guides the step. You can determine where you want to go and, and plan, but God determines where you really go. So it's mm. going back to the source to give you the way to plan. That's the kingdom way. Because the non, the, the maybe secular way or the non-spiritual kingdom way is very much self-dependent. And a, a true career plan, I think for me, is I've consulted God. And this is where God is leading me. And these are the steps that will help me get to where God is showing me. And God might not tell you the end, but he will show you steps. And he's telling you, okay, do this for now. You're like, well, I don't, I don't want to do that. Like that's, But it's going to keep you in a place where you're going to learn skills and develop in a way that will help you for the place he wants you to get to. So that for me is the kingdom way. Mm, you dropped a little gem there. You consulted God. Oh, yeah. You went to the great consultant. That The biggest... <laughs> <laughs> the greatest consultant is Christ. The greatest consultant is Christ. Like wow. we all here call ourselves consultants, but ultimately the greatest of them are Christ because God. I mean, your cons- a consultant is there to kind of guide and support and be a bit of a not know it all, but someone of expertise to help you solve problems. Mm-hmm. That is God as an all knowing being. You know, you can be a. I'm a fintech consultant type, right? So, I can give that in a fint. But God has that about everything and anything and everyone. So, why wouldn't I go to the greatest consultant? Yeah, no, that's just again (laughs) another charge for us because I want to embody that kingdom way of doing things Mm. as well. And like you said, the world is very dependent on self. Mm. So, as an element of denial to self, like you've got to really deny yourself of exactly what. You want, not that God doesn't want, God wants to give you, you know, the desires of your heart and Mm. he wants to prosper you. He's came, Jesus came to give you life and life Mm. in in abundance in full. So it's not like, I don't want to like say something wrong as in you can't get there. But as you mentioned in Proverbs, book of Proverbs, wisdom is is free. (laughs) Mm. But, you know, a man planeth in his heart, but the Lord establishes his his steps. steps. That's right. Meaning that we can plan all we (laughs) want. (laughs) <laughs> it's a career plan. Like, we can plan exactly. all we want, which is good because we've got the plan. Yeah. But the the setting of the our grounding. steps, of yeah. the ground, right? You don't want to step in quicksand exactly. <laughs> and start sinking. And a lot of us are, and a lot of us do, right? Because you see these flashy jobs, you're like, oh, I want to do this. And then you get there, God forbid you fail. Why? Did you ask God for this this job? Or did God tell you to be here? And another thing is, even if you find yourself in difficulty, because I'm sure many of us, We'll go somewhere. God has told us like, oh my gosh, but God will never let you fail. As in, there's something you will learn, ways you will grow. Like failure, even even rethinking what failure really is, is it the worldly way of, oh, I'm not making a lot of money. I'm not like getting high ratings. Or failure for me is not living a life that God wants for you. That's a failure. That's a failed life. So even if I'm everyone is around me saying, oh, you're not doing well. You're not. But if God is telling me, uh, this is where you're meant to be, this is... I'm living a successful life. Well, that it, it's everything is just relating. I'm so sorry because we we're in this brunch today and we we're talking about the that, but also how kind of like beauty and how if everybody else don't think you're beautiful, like that doesn't matter. The one who created you, who put beauty That's in right. you, sees you as beautiful. That's right. So it's like 
you're successful, but we will we and it's it's hard because we live in a social yeah, I was say. world interaction. Yeah. We do take esteem off of other people, yeah. how we yeah, see yeah, ourselves, yeah, how yeah. other people perceive us. It's natural. You you're meant to feel this. I'm feeling this. You feel like everyone's meant to feel this. But if we get caught up to that, if we go yeah. for validation from others, and this is this was exactly what was mentioned in this branch, which is so so powerful. It was like if we continue that trend of going to validation what other people say of us, think of us, the minute that they change what they say of us and think of us, it's like you're finished. That's it. You're not rooted. Remember what I said? Your roots enlighten your root. It always goes back to how you view yourself mm. and most importantly, what God has told you about you. And that's why I do affirmations. That's why I affirm myself daily. Because you go into the marketplace, you go into the world and you can get very lost. Mm. You, you say social media, you can get very lost. People can tell you, oh my gosh, I say this, I say that. But even the podcast I listened to today, again, it's Boss Babes. She took a break from her business and she just saw the amount of people that stopped speaking to her and and she felt such a lack of validation. And I was yeah. like, that shows me someone who is very successful in the eye. And then the moment they're not, she even admitted she didn't feel like herself and she had to come back into business. Wow. And it's like, I don't know. Personally, it just hit me. I was like, ah, oh, this is why it's so important to be a Christian. <laughs> this is why it's so important to have God and know God for yourself. Yeah, because you, the, you lost. The, the saying that he said is also, if you rely and start with commendation of man, you would end with condemnation of man. Yeah. Because man flips, a man, woman, yeah. as in the human flips. They'll yeah. commend you one time, they'll condemn you the other. They'll approve yeah. you one time, they'll disprove it's you It's biblical. The other. Anything of the world is leads to death. Like, it's, it's biblical. If you believe and rely on just the world and not the word and God, it only leads to, it only leads to death. Mm. It's only through the Christ, his word, that leads to life. So what word speaks to you? that you would say that you've got this like grounding because surely if you're confident there's a word that speaks to you no matter what people yeah. say about you there's a word that no I know what God says about me yeah it's actually a bible verse um that has rooted career confident second corinthians um, chapter three verse four to five it talks about I'll paraphrase it um it talks about my confidence comes from God not that I'm qualified on my own but God qualifies me Mm. I do not qualify myself. It doesn't matter how many uh, go to, yeah, I have this degree. <laughs> ah, it's nice, but ultimately God qualifies me. Mm. God is who roots me. God is who makes me valuable. And God makes me who I am. So it doesn't matter where I am, who, who people think I am. And trust me, I'm saying it's a journey. I'm not saying this like I've got it all. I'm on a confidence journey daily, right? But it always goes back to where does it come from? The source, the roots, as we've spoken about. Yeah. And if you're finding a lot, and unfortunately a lot of people's root is people, validation, or maybe that even, I'll be honest, for me at a point, it was my educational success. That was giving me my confidence. And then I had a knock on the door of, hey, I went to Warwick, you're not the most successful in your, you know, because I was so used to being the cleverest in the room. And, and I'm sure many of us high achievers, but I went to Warwick and it's like, oh, no, 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 you're not. You're even blue. You're like, <laughs> people <laughs> have... <laughs> you're borderline. <laughs> you're like, it's giving... You're starting again, you know, like, it's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not serious. But seriously, like, it's it's so important to think about where is it coming from. And I think that's been my... And it continues to be my journey, uh, especially now in my 20s. And I, I do so much work on myself because ultimately you know, for my future family and people I work with and who I become, everything I pull will come from the root, from where, you know, I source things from. And if it's sourcing from validation, it's sourcing from people and external things. Anything I pour out is only going to keep that chain on, especially from when I think about my own children in the future. And they're so cute, they'll be able to hear this. But I work so hard on myself so they can have roots in God and roots in mm. firm believing who they are rather than, insecurities or validations you know and it's it's just so important it's it's a chain it's a generational thing it continues and it will continue for time but i feel like as christians we have this almost duty to ourselves and to people ahead of us to remind them who they are i think that's basically like the christian faith like sharing the faith like christ is who made you christ is who loves you not people not i don't know a job or, or whatever people mm. find their their hope in is is in christ alone mm perfect and i think just off the back of that 
if and this doesn't have to be for you don't have to be christian or any no, sort of religion no, no. but i charge you to figure out what does god say about you yeah if you really think about it and some people might not even believe in god so this yeah. is the the difficulty but something that's really kept me grounded is what does god say about me yeah once i understand what question. god says about me then anything can else tell me anything. Just <laughs> exactly. it's just opinion it's just opinion lies anything it's not else, it's lies it's just a lie. lies and honestly that's so so important but yeah we are valuable because we are made in god's image that's right right and god's created us for good works that's right and we can see the good works flowing in your life and yours too you're in jesus name but um i always end this off with my guests like just throughout their journey and yours has been so so extensive from <laughs> <laughs> worry you know, based on the work innovation building yeah. i'd even mention your outstanding contribution awards oh, wow. <laughs> going into fintech business uh, career coaching out of your whole journey to up until you now like what are three valuable tips that you said that's helped you along the way yes i definitely think i'm happy you've asked the question because also it can round a lot of the things i've said number one your roots really enlighten your root spend time knowing yourself spend time uncovering things about yourself which can only be done through self-discovery and now like you said you have to be a christian for me being a christian god helps me to do this my faith helps me to do this but meditation journaling practice time for yourself R find out why you are the way you are that's helped me a lot in my journey because there's times you can't move beyond if the barriers aren't understood sometimes and they normally root in things that you've you've gone through experience so spend time by yourself knowing yourself that's number one mm -hmm. second thing is show love and be loving to everyone and that's helped me so much especially in my career in my business because it is almost like a domino effect you know it's like a compound effect the most love i've shown i've ex i've by god's grace i've ex abundantly been given back to me the opportunities i've got the people even the role i'm doing now the the projects i'm not like that's just been the favor of people and be a loving person show love be loving to anyone even people that are not nice to you <laughs> I, I act like everyone's nice to me not everyone's nice to me mm. not, not everyone likes me i mean that's just the reality but i always try to show love you know and in every way and any way you can be loving and never be afraid to challenge and ask questions. That's helped me a lot in my journey, actually. Yeah, I think that's helped me a lot. Wherever I've gone, don't be afraid to challenge and just ask questions. Like, why is this the way this is? Or how do we do this differently? Like, that's that's innovation to me. Um, I think that's what's always helped me push barriers. And I, I always find myself being different wherever i go i'm like i stand out and that's because i'm probably the ones asking the questions no one wants to ask so don't be afraid to ask questions and wow. challenge things yeah that is good <laughs> <laughs> three valuable tips thank you so much for of joining course, me it's I'm a privilege. So thank you for having me down. and we've done this yeah, for those who are hello. listening they want to connect with you personally or maybe connect with career confidence like where can they find you on social media yeah the best place is definitely instagram i love instagram i'm quite quite good there so at career.confident and also you can find me on linkedin so vera koje you can get through to me on linkedin as well but i'm a lot better on instagram if i'm honest so get through to me on instagram perfect and if you are listening and you like this episode make sure to hit the like button wherever you're listening to and share it with a friend and last but not least if you're interested in joining the valuable community which is a community of 18 to 13 year olds students and early young professionals where we help each other upskill and become more valuable to society and to the workplace then you'll find the link below on youtube or spotify or wherever you're listening fill in the form someone will get back to you and hopefully you can join the community and yeah. one last thing i have a cheeky cheeky ask because in the community like i said we love sharing value but i think it'll be very very useful if you're free right we can do like an online session with yes a Q &A i'd love to drop do that people can just ask questions let's do about that let's set that up i'd love to do that yeah Oh, Let's do that. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me, Vera. Of it's been a privilege. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs>